The purpose of a vaporizer is to add anesthetic vapor into the fresh gas flow in a way that the output of the vaporizer delivers the set concentration of the anesthetic agent accurately. Vaporizers have advanced from simple inhalers to today's sophisticated devices which are microprocessor controlled, temperature regulated, and equipped with flow sensing technology. The design improvements were driven by the introduction of potent inhalational anesthetics, the unique properties of some agents, a deeper understanding of their mechanisms, and the need to address issues in older vaporizers such as variations in output due to changes in temperature and pressure. In this video, we will briefly look into how the vaporizers are classified and mostly focus on the basic design of vaporizer. The prequel to this video on the physical principles of vaporizer will be beneficial to fully grasp the concepts in this one. Although there are various ways to classify vaporizers like the one shown here, a single vaporizer might have one or several characteristics from different classifications. Some of the classification are obsolete due to technological advances too. However, in my view, this classification allows us to understand the vaporizer design in a more systemic way. So we will look into them one by one. We will start our discussion with the methods used in vaporizer to regulate the output of the vaporizer. It includes variable bypass and measured flow. The variable bypass system consists of an inlet and outlet and the vaporizing chamber. Fresh gas enters the vaporizer through the inlet. It connects to a gas supply line, allowing a mixture of gases like oxygen or nitrous oxide to flow into the system. The vaporizing chamber is where liquid anesthetic is converted into vapor. It features a heating element to assist in vaporization and is designed to maximize contact between the liquid and gas ensuring efficient vaporization. We shall look into them later. The outlet is where the vaporized anesthetic mixed with carrier gases exits the vaporizer. The reason it is called bypass is because the vaporizer has a bypass pathway that allows a portion of the fresh gas flow to bypass the vaporizing chamber while another portion passes through the chamber to become saturated with anesthetic vapor. And it's variable because the dial on the vaporizer controls the concentration of anesthetic gas delivered to the patient by adjusting the ratio of gas that passes through the vaporizing chamber versus the gas that bypasses it. For this reason, it is also called concentration calibrated. As we have seen, the variable bypass method splits the gas into two streams. The ratio of fresh gas flow bypassing the vaporizing chamber to the flow passing into the vaporizing chamber is referred to as the splitting ratio. Let's begin with this simple vaporizer containing sevoflurane to understand how splitting the fresh gas changes the percentage of delivered anesthetic. The saturated vapor pressure of sevoflurane is 157 mm of mercury at 20 degrees Celsius. The vapor covers the liquid sevoflurane. Now let's add a fresh gas or oxygen flow to get that anesthetic vapor. The resultant gas flow will now have the vapor of sevoflurane in it assuming the flow is slow enough to let it equilibrate. This is 157 mm of mercury or approximately 21% of total flow if expressed in percentage. This is way too much to use in practice. To lower its concentration, we need to split the fresh gas flow and only allow a proportion to go into the vaporizing chamber by making some gas bypass it. For instance, if we send 50% into the vaporizing chamber and 50% through the bypass channel, we can half the resultant concentration of sevoflurane in the gas flow. This is because we only saturate half of the total gas with sevoflurane. 
Our resultant concentration is half the SVP or 11%. In practice, even 11% is too much as MAC of sevoflurane is around 2%. We can vary the amount of agent entering the chamber to change the resultant concentration of the gas flow. This is known as adjusting the splitting ratio, and the dial or knob on the top of the vaporizer does it. So if we have 10% fresh oxygen entering the vaporizing chamber, the resultant fresh gas will have 10% of the SVP in it. So for sevoflurane this would be about 2.1% which is 1 mac for sevoflurane. The concept of splitting ratio can be viewed through mathematical expression too. Let's calculate the splitting ratio for sevoflurane to be delivered at a concentration of 2% again. At full saturation, Sevoflurane contributes about 157 mm of mercury to the total pressure of a gas mixture. So the concentration of sevoflurane in the gas mixture is 21% where 760 mm of mercury is the total atmospheric pressure. To achieve a 2% concentration of sevoflurane, the splitting ratio can be calculated using the formula. Plugging in the values, we get the splitting ratio of 0.11. This means that approximately 11% of the fresh gas flow will pass through the vaporizing chamber to pick up sevoflurane while the remaining 89 will bypass it. We can also convert this value into ratio by dividing 1 by 0.11 which equals 9 approximately. This means for every one part of fresh gas that passes through the vaporizing chamber, approximately nine parts of fresh gas bypasses it. Note that this calculation is a simplified way of looking into splitting ratio as there are many factors that impact the ratio. Variable bypass vaporizers are the most common type used in modern anesthesia machines due to their reliability and precision in delivering volatile anesthetics. Vaporizers using this method of delivering output are given here. We will talk about individual vaporizers in the coming videos. Another method of regulating vaporizer output is the measured flow method. A measured flow method is used in older types of anesthetic vaporizer. It involves a vaporizing chamber where an anesthetic agent is heated at temperature above its boiling point. The measured flow of oxygen is allowed to pass to the vaporizing chamber which carries a vapor anesthetic at a very high concentration. In order to dilute this lethal concentration of anesthetic coming out of measured flow, it is combined with the gases passing from the main flowmeter. So the operator has to set the flow to the vaporizer and bypass with separate flowmeters. This means that respective flows have to be calculated for each agent for a given temperature and vapor output. Adjusting the vapor concentration with this method is a complex process. Let's briefly try to tackle it here. Let's create isoflurane at 1% with the total flow of 5 liters per minute. To create this mixture, the vaporizer must generate 50 liters per minute of vapor which is 1% of 5000. So 1% isoflurane in 5 liters per minute flow requires 50 milliliters per minute of isoflurane vapor diluted in a total volume of 4950 milliliters fresh gas. The 4,950 milliliters per minute is the combined flow from the two flow meters. The saturated vapor pressure of isoflurane at 20 degrees Celsius is 238 millimeters of mercury and this represents 31% of isoflurane. This 50 milliliters per minute is 31% of sevoflurane vapor. 
The rest 69% of this or 111 milliliters per minute is the measured flow of carrier gas or oxygen that must flow to the vaporizing chamber. This flow must be deducted from the total flow of 4,950 milliliters so that the main flow meter delivers 4,839 milliliters per minute. Adding the vapor flow, measured flow, and the fresh gas flow from the main flow meter gives 5 liters which contains 50 milliliters of isoflurane representing 1% of the mixture. This calculation is quite complex and adjusting the flow rates of two flow meters to precisely achieve the required anesthetic concentration is challenging at best. As a result, this method of regulating vapor output has become obsolete. The copper kettle vaporizer introduced in the early 1950s used measure flow method to regulate the vaporizer output.